Hello community! I got a lot of questions. So which large language model can I use now for my commercial application? Which is it? Which model is safe for me so that nobody will sue me, no competitor will find out that I use code that was not open source licensed? So, welcome! As of week 19, 2023, we have 15 LLMs with a very specific license structure. And you might say, my goodness, he is not going to talk about intellectual property rights and the distinction between industrial property and copyright, what copyright is, what a copyright holder is, how it is generated, and what a copyright license is. And you are right, because you can read this if you are interested or you know it. Now, interesting part, there are two main open source licenses. And yes, it is a license. And you have MIT or MIT 2.0. The only requirement is that the original copyright notice and the license must be included in all copies or substantial portions of the software. Then you have Apache 2 license, also a permissive license, somewhat similar, but you have more restrictions. Apache license required that any modifications made to the software, to the code, must be clearly marked as such a modification. It requires that any derivative works must include a notice stating that this is derived from the original work. Please really be careful about this. And then, of course, we have here the GPL or the General Public License. A series of widely used free software licenses that guarantees end users the freedom to run, study, share, and modify the software. Now, GPL is a copy left license. Please notice this difference. This means that derivative work can only be distributed, distributed under the same license term. You cannot change suddenly the license. You are bound to the basic versions that you changed. Why? This wants to ensure that any additional work built upon it remains free and open source. Designed to ensure software remains free, open source has been used for many popular open source projects. You know, the Linux kernel, for example. So you see, an open source license is not so easy as you might guess, because it allows for source code blueprints designed to be used by other people. And if you want to have a list of all open source licenses, easy. There's an open source initiative or the OSI, and there you see all approved and regulated open source licenses. You say, hey, what about if I'm in Europe? In Europe, I have an, another license. I have the European Unix public license. It is a free software license. It is approved, it is law, and it is also OSI, so it is approved by the American uh, Association here. It is even OSI certified. It's the first free and open source software license generated and value in 22 European languages and, and states. It belongs here, not to the permissive license set, but to the copyleft license set. And it has further specifications. So if the original work that, for example, my code builds upon, and even if I modify the code or even improve the code significantly, if I redistribute now this code package, the same license must be applied as the original work. So I cannot go and change now suddenly if I use EUPL, the license type. No, the same license as the original work must be applied. And if it was open, everything else that builds upon and is modified and improved is open. And you say, hey, wait, what about GPT-4 license? And what about this black box that we have currently, these huge monster LLMs? Are they or not based on the open source PyTorch framework? or the TensorFlow 2 framework that is open source? Well, there is a reason why there is a black box. There is a reason why you do not get a license. And 
maybe at first you should ask yourself, do you buy a licensed code segment with copyright? Or are you in the area of an industrial property, of a product? And there you have completely different laws. So yes, PyTorch is an open source machine learning framework. Yes, yes, yes. But you know, if you go there and you have a look at the license file and it's provided for you, it must be provided for you. And you find out, for example, it might be a BSD license file and you go to OSI and you search for a BSD and you find, oh wow, I have a one clause, a BSD plus pattern, I have a specific Berkeley clause, I have a two clause, I have a three clause, I have a zero clause. So this is where all the lawyers come in and my goodness, you can spend a lot of money. So if you want to build a company, if you want to build your app that you want to sell for a commercial purpose, you take extra care on what code segment you buy and what code segment you add on your intellectual property. So here we are, PyTorch, GitHub, PyTorch. And there is a license file. There's always a license file. I just have to find it. License, here we go. So this is the license for PyTorch. And you see, copyright, Facebook, yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 Google, yes, 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 yes. All contributions from other contribution, all rights reserved. And then here you have here the redistribution of source code must retain the above copyright notice in binary form musting and neither the names of Facebook, DeepMind, and, and, and I'm allowed to use to endorse or promote products derived from this software without specific prior written permission. Take this into consideration. And of course, the software is prohibited, is provided by the copyright holders and distributor as is, not limited to implied warranties. Yes, 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 yes. So you know this. So you see, all these licenses you have to respect if you use PyTorch, because those are the creator of PyTorch and they have rights. And if you just come out with a product that would violate one of those rights, you could be in big trouble. So coming back now, in week 19 of 2023, there are 15 large language models that have a commercial license in the open source domain. Not all are equal. A lot have restriction, but they are open source. So let's have a look. What can you use if you want to commercialize your product, your idea, your code, whatever you have? Here you have the language model, one row, the second row, and it's 15. You have the checkpoints, you have the paper explaining it, you have the size, you have the context length, and you have the license. Apache, 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 MIT, Apache, OpenRail. Hey, Bloom has a specific OpenRail license. I have a video only on OpenRail, the license for Bloom. A complete video just explaining to you the content of OpenRail. Then we have SA4, we have SA3. Take especially care if you really want to build up a business. It is so easy that you get sued by your competitor, by somebody else, and you could lose your business. So be careful under what license you go. This is a data that I got from the internet. I got it from Eugene Yan. And he published this data under the Apache license too. So I'm allowed to show you this license. It is his work, it is his credit. And I have to tell you, hey, if you want to use this, especially if you want all in blue, of course, hyperlinks, go there. This is a GitHub repository. Eugene Yan, open LMS, here GitHub. Go there, click on the checkpoints if you want to download it, read the paper. Have a look at the comparison, have a look at the different licenses for open source LLM that you want to use for your product, for your industrial segment, for your customer. And what are the limitations for you? Ah, you see, 15 LLMs for commercial application. Gee, that was easy. I hope you enjoyed it.